What's going on guys? This is Jake at That Fit Friend, and today we're gonna to be looking at the Hylite Circuit 2. So three pros that I have with this model is number one, this is a pretty lightweight and breathable shoe. So if you plan to wear these outdoors in a hot gym or to your classes, this model should breathe really well. And the overall Vibram outsole is also very lightweight, so it doesn't add a ton of bulk to this model. So you can wear them for longer periods in a variety of settings, and overall they breathe well and they are very lightweight. The second pro that I have with this shoe is that they didn't taper the toe box. So if you like having a bit more room in your toe box to really splay those toes and grip the floor, this model should be a really good fit for you. It doesn't have a ton of taper up here, so you are gonna get ample toe box room, which you don't get with every single cross training shoe that has like a more narrow or neutral last construction to it. The third pro that I have with this model, you get three different insoles. You get a four millimeter insole, a six millimeter insole, and a zero millimeter insole. So these are all designed to help the shoe excel in different settings. Now, I don't think they're always a pro, especially with how they feel. We'll talk about that in the cons, but I have to respect highly for trying something new to make this shoe a bit more dynamic with its performance and construction. But now let's dive into a couple of cons I have with this shoe. So three cons that I have with this model is number one, the boot and heel of this shoe are very thick. And I don't think you can really tell that this is a thing with the images they use on their product page. And I know they mention on the product page that they listen to the community and they rework the heel counter, but the material in this model is just so thick. Like I don't really like the aesthetic of it. I don't really like the fit. And if you're wearing thicker socks, like it's a little bit uncomfortable too. Um, so <laughs> while I get, that they are trying to prevent slip and they reworked it. I think they might've went a little bit too far when it comes to the material used in the boot of this shoe. The second con that I have with this model is that the tongue is not durable whatsoever. So I already had my tongue rip and that was because I was like mid set. I was pulling on one side of the tongue to bring it over because it was sliding in this way. And overall, like I'm just not a fan of these really thin tongues. And it reminds me a lot of the Nike Romalios 3 that had the same issues. When you'd pull on one side, the tongue would rip and that's because the material is just so thin. So while I like how lightweight the tongue is, if you get this model, please make sure you pull on both sides when you're putting it on. Do not pull on one side, especially if the shoe is tight and it's tight because my tongue already ripped and that's pretty dang frustrating. The third con that I have with this model is that while I like the insoles that Highly provides with the shoe and like I like the idea of trying to innovate and give the shoe a different fit and feel, I don't think that the insoles are gonna work for everybody's foot anatomy. So if we look at the zero millimeter and six millimeter insole, for example, on the six millimeter, we have a 16 millimeter heel height, we have a 10 millimeter toe height, and then the arch is 20 millimeters. On the zero millimeter, it's 10 millimeters across. Now that is gonna give each of these insoles a very different feel, especially when we're considering the arch of each of these insoles. So when I was rotating between all the insoles and the shoe and testing them, I noticed that I wasn't actually a fan of how the arch is different in each insole. Like I either want some support or I don't, like the difference between each insole was a little bit off-putting. And overall with how thick these insoles are, I'm not exactly sold that they're gonna be super stable too. Like when I was walking back my 365 pound squat, I was feeling a little bit of compression on the heel, which I'm not the biggest fan of. I would have rathered highly use like one insole that's a bit more thin in nature with a consistent heel to toe drop and then included maybe like one insole for running and a heel wedge, similar to how the Foos model did it. I liked that they only included a couple of things to add variety and it didn't completely change the whole fit and feel of the shoe. Overall, those are my cons with this model, but now let's dive in to performance. So when chatting on performance in the Hylite Circuit 2, I'm gonna talk about how this model does with lifting, more versatile training, shorter runs, and then daily wear. So when it comes to lifting, this model is really interesting. It is not going to be your best bet for heavier training. For example, in my 365 pound squats, I noticed during the walkout that the heel started to compress a little bit. So I kept in the four millimeter insole for my squats. And what you'll notice is that the insole itself is pretty thick. And this is like what's separating the foot from the ground. The overall outsole is very stable. And with each insole, they're pretty thick in nature and they're made with this foam. So you might notice a little bit of compression for your heavier sets. So is this model gonna be the best bet for heavier barbell training? I don't think so. And I would say probably cap your loading around 350 pounds. If you plan to go a little bit heavier, then you might wanna use the zero millimeter drop insole here because it is a bit thinner in nature. There's not gonna be as much compression, but with the four millimeter and six millimeter drop, if you like having a slightly higher heel position, you may notice a little bit more compression due to the overall insole and how thick it is. 
But that being said, for the recreational lifters who aren't planning to go super heavy, or they just want this model for some casual machine work and whatnot, this model should work well. The Vibram outsole provides adequate grip on a variety of surfaces. So I do think this model will work really well for recreational training. For versatile training, I like this shoe and I think it does have a few things going for it. Like I like the Vibram outsole. This outsole does squeak a little bit out of the box, but once they're broken in, that squeak kind of goes away. And this Vibram outsole provides adequate grip on a variety of surfaces. And that's why I think this model excels really well for classes where you might be on wood floors or if you're training on platforms in the gym or on rubber floors in your CrossFit box, etc. This outsole should grip pretty well. I also like that with each insole, there is a different level of thickness. So if you do have an insole that you prefer that fits really well, you're gonna get a lot of responsiveness from that insole. So for example, if you wanna put in the six millimeter insole, you get a nice thick pad here, which I think adds to the overall responsiveness and versatility to the shoe's performance. So I do think this shoe can perform for versatile training and it does so really well because it's lightweight, it grips the floor really well, it has a good amount of maneuverability up in the toe box. If you use the four millimeter or six millimeter insole, you should get a nice level of responsiveness in this shoe. When it comes to shorter runs, Overall, this model does okay. It doesn't really blow me away even with the thicker insole because with the overall flat and stable outsole here, you're gonna have a somewhat similar feel across the board. And truthfully, like I don't think the insole difference between this and like the four and the zero is gonna make or break your overall running performance. Will it make it a little bit more comfortable? Yes. But at the end of the day too, this is a cross trainer that I would say probably cap your runs to maybe like a mile in length at most, and then use them for shorter runs and sprint work, agility work as you see fit and use the insole that fits best and feels best for you. But for longer runs, I would say pass on this model. For daily wear, this model works and I like the Vibram outsole because I do think it's gonna be durable, especially if you're wearing them outside and you're getting them in a little bit of water, a little bit of dirt, et cetera. But the problem is for me at least, I like the overall appearance of like the midfoot up, but with how thick this heel is back here and with how my tongue already ripped, this isn't going to be the most aesthetic model out there. So will they work for daily wear? Yes, but truthfully, like I don't like the big heel and that's kind of a turnoff for me and I probably wouldn't wear them on a daily basis a lot because they don't look super casual in nature. Like these definitely look like gym shoes and with that thicker heel, I'm not the hugest fan of how thick this model is. So now let's answer the question, is this model worth it? I tread lightly when I say this because I think that the Circuit 2 has a few construction traits really going for it, but I don't think this shoe is going to be for everyone. I think if you are training super heavy or if you want something that's a bit more consistent with how it fits and feels, the Circuit 2 is not going to be for you. Plus, I do think that the next model will be even better, so you might wanna hold off for the next iteration of the shoe because with the tongue construction, the boot, and how the different insoles feel and fit, especially under heavy loads, you may be a little bit capped with the overall performance and durability of this model. So that all being said, I do think it's worth it if you're a more casual lifter or somebody who just wants this shoe for hit classes or class sessions, et cetera, and you don't plan to go super heavy, but if you plan to train super heavy and you want something a bit more consistent and stable across the board, this is not going to be your best bet. So when it comes to sizing and fit in the circuit too, most lifters and athletes should be safe going true to size. And also, while I'm not the biggest fan of rotating the insoles and I'm more of a fan of just leaving the four millimeter and leaving it as it is, I'm a huge fan of the dimensions of the length and width of the shoe. I love that the toe box is plenty wide to display the toes and the length fits pretty true. So most lifters and athletes should be safe going true to size. So when it comes to price in this model, you can expect to pay $130 USD. Is that price point fair? I think if you're a recreational lifter, somebody who's focused on classes or hit sessions, then you could justify the price and this model will be worth it. However, if you are a diehard into CrossFit or you want this shoe to train super heavy, you're gonna be a little bit capped with this model's performance. So you may want to look into other shoes for your needs if you're planning to spend $130 on a pair of shoes. All right, so now let's go over the construction of the Hylite Circuit 2. So up here on the toe, we have an extended outsole layer that wraps up and then covering the toe box, we have like a reinforced upper material here, which is like a nice firmer mesh. 
Overall, I actually really like the toe box and the durability in this model. I haven't had any issue with the friction or abrasion really tearing up this material. So if you are toe dragging at any point, you should be plenty fine in this model for a while. We have a breathable mesh throughout the upper here, and then we have six eyelets that go up. Once again, we have a thinner tongue. And even on this tongue, this isn't the rip model. Like these tongue areas are already looking pretty fragile in nature. Like this one doesn't look like it has the cleanest cut. So overall, not the biggest fan of the tongue. I like how lightweight it is for the breathability but i do think it's a bit too fragile especially if you're going really hard in this model over here on the lateral side we have some highly branding and then back here on the boot once again we have a really thick boot so you're not going to have heel slip issues in this model i don't think but overall i wish they would just taper down this material a little bit or rework the overall structure of the boot so you don't have heel slip issues but then you also don't have this like huge thick boot back here. We have a heel tab back here to help pull the shoe on, which I thought was pretty clutch because with this thicker boot, you need something to pull on the shoe sometimes, especially if you have a sweaty sock or a sweaty foot and you're trying to put the shoe back on. Back here on the heel, we have a firm rubber throughout and then we have a Vibram outsole. So overall, this outsole grips the floor really well and I really like the rubber used. This model will squeak a little bit once again, but after a few wears, that squeak should go away. And once you break in this toe box, that shouldn't be an issue for most folks. And then once again, the insole in this model is what gives this shoe like it's responsive and versatile feel. So this is the four millimeter insole. So as you can see, it's fairly thick in nature. And if you wanna switch this out for your own custom insole, you should be fine doing so. And truthfully, I think that could actually be a really good thing for folks who want like a shoe that has ample width in the toe box, but they wanna use their own insoles. So that being said, the insole in this shoe is what gives this model it's like responsive and versatile fit and feel. And then overall outside of that, there's not a lot of material that separates this outsole from the sock liner and the floor. So if you wanna put your own insole in for a little bit more stability and you like the dimensions of the length and width of the shoe, I think you should be safe doing so. Overall, those I think are the biggest construction callouts for this model. If you have any additional questions, hit me in the comments below and I'll answer whatever you have. All right guys, that wraps up my review of the Hylite Circuit 2. Overall, I think the shoe has some really good construction features, but there are definitely areas where this model can improve, especially for the next iteration. If you have any questions on this model at all, drop a comment down below or reach out to me personally, whichever you prefer. And as always guys, drop a like on the video, drop subscribe to the channel. I will see you guys in the next one. Thank you.